I need my hair back, dude. Yeah, you even shaved your head for this. I saw that video uh, of... Uh, right? Yeah, I'm shaving You know, the crazy thing, the thing, the thing that nobody knows is like when they booked me here, I was in Santa Monica, California, and they met with me, Angus and Tim Warren. And, and I'm like, well, guys, how am I going to go to anywhere, wherever you bring me? And I said, I'm going to get recognized. And they're like, they, they're, they're like these Hollywood guys, right? So they're like, oh, yeah, you're so famous. And even that little punk Brian said that. Keep, right. keep this, by the way. <laughs> and and uh, and I'm like, no, guys, like you're you're not going to be able to, you're not going to, I'm not going to be able to go anyplace and not be recognized. My 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 following on social media is freaking really really strong. People know me, and they thought I was just an ego, thing, right? Yeah. So literally one minute later, this guy walks in, ten X, <laughs> and they're like. Fuck, how many times did that happen to you? I said, oh, I guarantee you. There's no way. Wherever yeah. you drop me, you can drop me in Malta, south of Sicily, and I'm going to I'm gonna meet somebody. That 10X thing has got some legs, and it's met a lot of people. So, you know, I was in your place. Uh, I think I was in your place. It was the third day. I'd got a membership at Snap. Alex had set me up. And I walked up the stairs to go work out. I had a hoodie on, a gray hoodie, and my head was shaved. Um, walked upstairs. There's a guy and a girl at the end of the stairs right there where the, I think the leg machine's over there in front of the aerobics, the, the biking place. And there's a guy facing the stairs and a girl with my, her back to me. I walk up. I turn to go down to the, uh-huh. down the, you know, and I hear him say, that guy looks just like Grant Cardone. That was the third day I was there with a shaved head. And then I realized, oh, I can't wear the hoodie. I needed the head. I needed the bald right. head to throw anybody off for a second. But and then the masks definitely helped on phase the two. Mask, when you came back, that I, was able to, to protect you a totally, little bit. Totally, <laughs> yeah, totally. So. In fact, when I came back, I didn't shave. Yeah. Because I'm like, I told them, I said, they said, please come back. You know, I'm like, dude, I ain't shaved my head again. Yeah. And they're like, uh, I didn't know, I didn't know they were going to be doing COVID tests every week. Whatever you want to do, Grant, however you want to do it, you just come back and finish. I said, I'm coming back. We're going to finish this whole shoot as fast as we can because I was worried about COVID coming back again, shutting it down again. Uh. I, sh- I will not shave my head because my hair was fully grown back, man. I was looking good, dapper again like you. He looks like Ben Affleck, doesn't he? <laughs> and um, and uh, what happened was I got back there and I'm like, oh, I'm going to live behind the mask. I'm gonna be able to. I'm gonna be able to pull this off now because of the mask, and I'll keep a full head of hair. But I hate the mask. It worked. Covered it up. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, I came down from. Uh, I came down to Miami with Grant Cardone today. Get some extra time with you today. I got uh, several months pre and post COVID with you. Yeah. Yeah. And followed this tornado around for a long period of time, and uh, now we're uh, we're in your spot. Yeah. So thanks good, for good having to have us. You down good to, good to have your team down here. Good thanks. to have Wake Up Pueblo down here. You got a great team of people. We do. We are blessed. It yeah. went from that little team to that big team. All boom. Because uh, because of Grant Cardone and uh, the undercover billionaire and all this stuff. Uh, we got a million stories that we can tell here. But first, tell me about this picture. What's going on right here? So uh, this is <laughs> a, uh, an artist called No Two. NOE2. It's a beautiful picture. And my wife, uh, every year they have a thing called, um, what is it here in Miami? Art Basel. Big, one of the biggest art shows in the world. Maybe the biggest. So she said, hey, come down. Come down to this thing. She had been there the day before. I walk into this huge, I mean, this is, there's tens of thousands of pieces of piece art. Probably hundreds of thousands. Like everywhere you go. It's just an art show. But it's massive. And I walk in this huge building. I'm pissed off because I'm late. And I, I, I couldn't find a place to park the car and couldn't find Elena. And I'm like, texting her, where are you? And then I look up and like 300 yards away, this beast is standing there. Like I literally, it must have been, it was probably a football field, at least a football field, maybe two away. And I was like, oh my God. And I run into Elena. And I'm like, we're buying that piece. <laughs> so I walk up to the guy and I'm like, how much is it? And he tells me, I said, here's my card. Call me. What did he tell you? Uh, what was the number on this thing? I don't know. It was ridiculous. Tell me. Tell what, what's ridiculous? Uh, it was uh, maybe 110 or something. You know? Yeah. And I said, call me back with a number when you're ready to leave with it. I said, nobody else can take that. Yeah. Nobody else wants a gorilla. If they like the gorilla, they won't like the cigar. The, it's too big to go anywhere. <laughs> Down so Okay. Him. And then and he called me back. I said, here's the number I'll give you. 
And? If it doesn't fit, I'll keep it. Okay? Or I'll give you your number. If it fits, uh, maybe I keep it, maybe I don't. If it doesn't fit, you're taking it back. But at this number, I keep it no matter what. So we worked it out. And so it was brilliant. Really, really, he's a graffiti artist. It's beautiful. There's right? so much in that. And there's a hidden message I heard from Sherry yeah, today. Yeah, what, what is the hidden message? The message is right there. Do y'all know what it says right there? Uh, it said something about... I am the original artist or something. I am Matt Smith. That's artist. It says. Yeah. it says Matt Smith. Matt Wake Smith. up, Puebla. Wake up! <laughs> Wake up! Wake up! Coming in hot. So this was originally for your house. It or was no, originally it was designed for no, me. No, it was originally for me. Just wherever you could put it. I'm like, I love that beast. All right. So, so we've got some history together on yeah. Undercover Billionaire yeah, in yeah. little Pueblo, Colorado. You got yeah. dumped off yeah. in Pueblo. Can you tell us that story? What happened? So, How did you get to Pueblo, Colorado of all places? So in January, in January of 2020, the craziest year in the history you know, of our country, maybe the world, um, I, was, I was doing seven cities. I was doing uh, Vegas, Phoenix, San Diego, San Francisco, Oakland, LA, and we were prepping for our growth conference. So in, in February of every year, we do this big conference, 12,000 people. It's freaking, it's a radical, um, star-studded event, right? So before the event, my staff here in January, were they, they were like, oh my God, we got too, so much going on, so much going on, so much going on. And, and, I, and every time they do that, I'm like, oh, you really? You got too much going on? Add something. Always. That's our solution to solving all problems. <laughs> I love it. Okay, you complain about that? So I said, I'm going to go do seven cities right now. And they were like, what? Dude, we got this one deal we're doing. What are you going to charge for the seven cities? It's going to be free. And they're like, why are you going to do a free event when we're trying to sell an event? I said, we're going to do them both. <laughs> So Elena and I and the kids went and traveled seven cities, did seven cities for free while we were selling this event. I get a call in early January from Discovery. And I'm, because I'm out there saying, this is going to be the best year you ever had in your life, or it's going to be the worst year. I said that everywhere I went. And sure enough, it, it was going to be the worst year for a lot of people. And I get this phone call from Discovery, a guy named Angus over at, uh, at uh, TJAT uh, Productions, T-I-J-A-T or something. I feel more like it's more like I Jack, we Jack. <laughs> they should change their name to we Jack. Um, and they called and said, hey, we, you're my first choice for the show. And we want to do the show called Undercover Billionaire. Have you heard of it? I said, no, I've never heard of it. And we want you to go. I said, where am I going? They said, we can't tell you. Okay, what's the game? A hundred bucks, you get a hundred bucks. We take away your name. We take away your identity. And your job's go turn it into a million dollars. You think you could do it? I said, oh, yeah, I could do it. I could do it. But be stupid. Why, why would I do it? I had to leave my business. So they said, hey, go watch this show, Undercover Billionaire. A guy named Glenn Stearns did it. So I went and watched him. I'm like, dude, they, they, he did it, but I, how am I going to do this? I got kids. I'm not leaving my kids. I'm not leaving my wife for 90 days. And I cannot leave my business. Even if I was willing to leave Elaine and the kids for 90 days, I got a bunch of kids around here, man. We, at that time, we had 180 employees here, another 350 in the real estate. I was doing deals. Like, you know my, my I oh, mean, absolutely. I, I got my I hands got on, like, I got all these meals being cooked. Tornado, all day, every day. So, I mean, right before this, I'm getting a call, we're working a deal. Yeah. This, this is my life. Like, I'm, I'm in deals all the time. Right. So, and we were selling the growth conference out. So that's our huge event every year. It's a tremendous, tremendous uh, financial obligation. A lot of moving parts, you know. Uh, I think we sent out 200 million emails last year to sell that event out. So they called me back. Hey, what do you think? I saw the I saw the opening with Glenn on Undercover Billionaire, where he's flying into Erie, and I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna do this shit. That was it. I'm gonna do this shit. And I'm gonna kill it. And then I watched everything Glenn did. Have you seen his show? You I have to see. I have it. not watched it all yet. Because me watching his show, that's how I came up with the strategies I use. Oh, really? When I get to Pueblo. Okay. Because I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And I'm not doing that. And that's something people really need to start learning. They need to start saying, hey, I, I, it worked for him, but that's not the way I'm going to do mine. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not going to do it like that, how am I going to do it? Mm -hmm. And that's where I made the decision on the way over there. So I leave Vegas. Let me just go back a second. I leave our growth conference in Vegas, February. I get on my plane and they're taking me away to a place. I agreed to do it. 
and I don't know where I'm going. We end up landing in Lamar. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I get off the plane. They're like, okay, what's your plan? And then I laid out exactly what my plan was. And what's crazy that you don't know is that the plan I laid out when I'm leaving Vegas went down exactly as I said it would. Really? Exactly. Tell us, tell us more. What is this plan? So, so it was, it was really about, you know, it was really about, I mean, I'm so glad I'm so blessed that I was dropped off in Pueblo because my plan was really about people. It wasn't about money. It was never about the million dollars. I knew I could get to the million if I could find the right people. And what I, when I watched Glenn do it and look, there's, there's, probably 50 ways people can get to wherever they're going. Yeah. When I watch Glenn do it, I'm just like, I'm not, I don't want to spend any time doing that. I don't want to spend time doing that. And I, don't want, I said, I'm going to find one guy in this town <laughs> that can connect me. And I did. I found him right away. Ryan Zabukovic. Yeah. And Ryan connected me to you and, yeah. and like three or four other great people. I knew within four days, I called my wife and I said, I'm going to crush this. And kind of behind the scenes, I mean, you guys obviously will not have seen it yet, but Watch this and then go back and when when the show drops, watch the show. But um, I called Elaine on the fourth day and said, I will crush this. I guarantee it. And she's like, why, why are you so certain? And I said, because what I said I would do, I'm not going to spend any money. I'm going to find the right people and the right people will lead me to the right business. I'm going to buy a real estate deal while I'm in Pueblo and I'm going to build a marketing company. Like that was the plan. Really? And when I got there, dude, once I got there, all I was worried about was where do I sleep, where's my water, and where's my food? Yeah. I mean, how do I impress you, a guy like you that's in business, and at the same time say, I need you to pay for my dinner? Yeah. It's freaking like I'm walking a tightrope. I'm lying all the time about who I am. Yeah. Lewis that was Curtis. terrible. Lewis Curtis. Lewis, Lewis Curtis from, from Los Angeles. Colorado. I'm in Los and Angeles. We're, my we're kids Googling are in Los it. Angeles. Everybody's Googling it, Facebooking and everything. We're like, who? Who's this Lewis Curtis guy coming then, into then, Pueblo, Colorado? That was the other no big, idea. I made that. That was a big mistake I made. Like, I should have had all my pages set up. Yeah. Because once I got there, I'm like, yeah, I'm a marketing genius. <laughs> Look at my oh, look at my little followers. Oh, I forgot my Facebook page. Oh, yeah. Look at my Instagram page. I yeah. don't have one of those either. But if only they knew who you really were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. After the fact, it, and I couldn't use any of that. Yeah, I couldn't absolutely. use. I couldn't use. Oh yeah, yeah, but guys, really, I have three million followers on Instagram. You know? Yeah. So, um, but but I said when I I said people, I'm looking for the right people, and the fact that I got to Pueblo, I was shocked every day because I kept telling Lena, the people here are so amazing. Awesome. These are the nicest people in the world. Yeah. These people are phenomenal. These people do what they say they're going to do. Like, it was like, it was, I could not have been dropped off in a better place. I think that that made it easier. And then meeting you and Jenny would obviously made it even that much more easy. Because you're just a good dude, man. Well, I appreciate that. Well, I, I do. Yeah. That is one of my questions, though, is like, you know, you, you've met plenty of people before me. You just happened to come into my little gym in Pueblo, Colorado. Why did you choose Matt Smith when this little journey of all the stuff that you were going to well, do? Why, so, why me? What happened there? So, so when I left, um, the first thing I decided when I was leaving Vegas, I'm like, okay, I'm going somewhere in the south southwest. Yeah, they're either going to drop me off somewhere in the boondoggles of Texas or Colorado. I knew it, or maybe New Mexico, maybe northwest of New Mexico. I could just see where the plane was going, right? And I knew how much fuel they put on. I asked Ryan, how much fuel did you put on? So this is your own plane. Yeah, this is my plane. Your plane, Ryan right? knew where he was. And going, I'm leaving Vegas, right? And I'm like, okay, you didn't put enough fuel on to get to to get to to get to Florida, okay, or Alabama. Like you fly enough, you start figuring the game out, right? Yeah. And the the, the plane l likes fuel, and so I'm like, we're going. We're either going to Texas. We're going to Texas. They're not going to bring me to Houston. I knew we weren't going to a big city because that this show is about bringing kind of tertiary cities that have been maybe hurt financially um, back to life. Find, f see if a, you can drop a guy off with no name, no money in a city that doesn't have, maybe have as much going on for it. Yeah. I knew I wasn't going to Denver. Uh, D Denver's in a boom. Uh, I said, no, there's no way it's Colorado Springs. They're booming. So it's going to have to be smaller than that for the, for the show. And, and they said, well, what's the first thing you do? First thing I'm going to do is find a place to sleep. Second thing I'm going to do, second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to a gym. No, first thing I'm going to do is drop my money off. And they're like, what do you mean your money? The $100. Yeah. I'm dropping that off at Wells Fargo. So I got in my truck, the truck they gave me. I drove from Lamar to Pueblo, went straight to Wells Fargo. Here's my money. And they're like, why do you get rid of your money? Dude, because I don't want to spend it. If I have it, I'll spend it. 
Second thing I did was went to the gym. Third thing I did was went and find, found a place to sleep. Fourth thing I did was go, I ran into your gym. And, and they're like, why are you going to a gym? Why is working out that important for you? I said, dude, working out ain't that important. Good people go to gyms. Hmm. Good people are in gyms. People that are trying to improve their lives are in gyms. So I knew I needed to go to church. I needed to go to a gym. I needed to go to a library. I needed to go where people were looking for improvement. People were looking for, you know, I needed to meet people. Yeah. So, and then I needed to start telling my story. What I didn't know was how hard it was to lie to people every day. That was, that was tough. Yeah. So I made it into your gym the first night I was there. Um, I said, hey, can I meet the owner of the gym? You know, yeah. that seems like a smart thing to do. I don't want to give too much away, though. Yeah. You know. That's fine. I met your boy, Alex. He set me up on a membership. I ended up meeting you. He gave me like a pass. I said, dude, I don't want to commit here. If the people aren't right for me, I'm moving to Pueblo. I started working my story out. Yeah. I'm moving here from L.A. Oh, really? Yeah, I hate L.A. L.A.'s terrible. I started working the story out, you know. I had to figure out how to work this camera crew into the deal. They're from, they're from some all America, America pride, American proud something. Yeah, they came on the notion that they were doing, doing a documentary. documentary on Pueblo, Colorado and, and showing me. how amazing So we had to figure out so how to that cover the, That's what I knew. Yeah. This Lewis guy comes in with a documentary saying, yeah. we're going to do this thing. And we just happen to meet this guy that wants to get into the real estate world or potentially do something special in Pueblo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you told, you know, we, we, we thought you were moving the family out. You wanted yeah. to check the scope out. So all the behind the scenes, they, 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 yeah. they, they played their cards okay. Yeah. So what was your expectations? I mean, going into the show, what was your expectations, you know, from, from this marketing thing that sounds like you thought about? I thought I was going to be there. I thought I would have the kids out there in four or five days. I told Sabrina, my oldest, I said, I guarantee, she's like, when am I going to be with you? Yeah. I said, oh, you're going to come help me do this. And I did not, once I got there, just being undercover was hard. Yeah. Then I'm like, I'm, not, I'm never going to be able to bring my kids here. People see us together. So, I mean, they, they have their own followers, right? So there was no way, like after a week, I didn't call home and tell anybody, but I told Elaine, I said, there's probably never going to be able to bring you out here. Don't tell the kids. Yeah. And my expectation was this is going to be easy. And then I hit with, okay, I'm not going to be with my family. Okay, now it just got harder. And then it got, and then it got to 15 degrees the first night. And then I'm pissing in, a, in bottles. Because I don't sleeping have sleeping in an RV. And I'm sleeping in an RV with a bad mattress. Yeah. And my neck's getting jacked. And I'm freaking, I, I'm grinding my teeth because it's so cold and I have no heat. And all of a sudden, this thing started getting real ugly. <laughs> but I thought I was going to be in and out, man. I said, guys, I'm doing this. Glenn took 90 days. I'm, I'm done in 45 days. I'll, make, I'll build a million dollar business in 45 days and I'm out of here. No, it didn't quite turn out like that. So then COVID hits. Us, COVID hit, and then you. Next thing I know, you're like, "I'll be back Monday. This is just. I'm gonna go visit the family. We'll yeah. be right back." And then, yeah, it was a Friday afternoon. We we both thought, "Ah, this will blow right over." COVID and it, and was all didn't. over the news. Yeah. So there what did you think epi- then? There was this thing happening, and it was going to be terrible. And I'm laughing about it. This is stupid. This yeah. is ridiculous. This is a scam. Blah blah blah. I was over at Z- Zabukovic's uh, RV place, and and me and his dad are talking. We both think it's a scam. And the next thing I know, the, the discovery guys say, hey, uh, things are going off in L.A. and Miami, though. It's, I'm sort of worried about the kids. And um, I said, guys, i got to go take care of my family for three days. I'll be back on Monday. I really thought I was coming back on Monday. Sunday, they called me and said, time out. This thing's getting out of hand. They got scared. And did you think you were, it was over? We shouldn't have stopped. We shouldn't have stopped. We should have kept going. I kept saying, let's just keep going. Yeah. Let's keep going until we can. Shut down, yeah. And they shut us down. I was I was basically sitting on my hands for three months. What was your f- favorite part about Pueblo, Colorado? Well, dude, the best the, and worst thing that you experienced yeah, in Pueblo, well, Colorado. Well, you know, I mean, the best and the worst thing. I mean, the I have best. terrible memories there. Okay, like this was the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life. There's a headline for you. Hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life. Number one. Number two, I would never do it again. Number three, I would tell anybody that's thinking about doing Undercover Billionaire, don't do it. Why is it the hardest thing you've ever done in your life? You've done a lot of hard things. From yeah. what I know about you, to get to where you're at, yeah. this was not an easy ride. And this was the hardest thing you've ever done. Why? It, the, this was, it was being away from family. Um, it was hard on the marriage. It was hard as a parent. It was hard. Uh, it was hard being by myself. It was hard being away from my team. Like... You know, this thing I built is not just about me. It's I got a team. I got support. 
So I'm running by myself every day. And then, then at night, I'm trying to have to keep the other things going. The lying was terrible. Yeah. I, I can't, nobody's ever gonna understand how, how, for a guy like me that always says what's on his mind, for me to have to add, oh yeah, by the way, I'm Lewis Curtis. I would literally, before I would go out in the morning, I would drive to your place. I am Lewis Curtis. I am Lewis Curtis. I am Lewis Curtis. I'm from Los Angeles. Oh, wow. I am Lewis Curtis. I am from Los Angeles. I would say it over and over and over again until I'm like, okay, I'm Lewis Curtis because I was always worried about saying, hey, Granny, what's up? What's a 10X? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I've said that a million times. Right. You know, you know how many streams I've done? Grant Cardone here. Your Uncle G, you know? Yeah. Well, dude, I had to break that hole. That was very painful. Yeah. I called Elena all the time. She's like, what's so hard about it? I'm like, the lying is terrible. So I had to lie to you, I had to lie to Jenny. Jenny would be like, hey, you wanna come hang out with us this weekend? Yeah, I really do. And I'm, I'm thinking, can't. but I ain't. Yeah. You, you, you offer me your basement? I'm like, man, I'd love to take your basement, but I can't because I have this other life. Yeah. And so that was really, really hard. Not knowing where I was going, really hard. Uh, managing money when you don't have any coming in. I mean, the big gift in this show was that, that I really learned what people go through every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's been a long time since I worried about any financially, the little stuff. I mean, I worry about big stuff. How am I going to get this 30 million bucks? Yeah. You know, why can't I own, own a yacht yet? When do I get my helicopter? I, I, I think about that kind of stuff, but all of a sudden it was like, I right. can't afford this eat? taco. Yeah. I can't tip the waitress $2. Like it was a different thing. I cannot buy a bottle of water. And it was like, whoa, dude, this is, this is real. And that's when I knew I couldn't bring my kids out. I'm like, I can't even fund myself. How am I going to fund them? And then, I, and then I really got connected to what's going on in America and what's, you know, with, with middle class, middle, not just poor people, but middle class. And, and started really connecting with the people in Pueblo with, with you know, it's a great town. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, uh, one, people don't know about it. It's got a bit of a stigma. Mm -hmm. And the town's not doing a lot to correct it. I think you will change that with Wake Up Pueblo. And, 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 and because of all that, the wages aren't there, right? So mm -hmm. people, people live in Pueblo. It's a beautiful town. They think they got to go to Denver to mm -hmm. actually have an opportunity, and it's not true. So I have never been any place where I met so many nice people, but, but I was also, you know, the game wasn't to meet nice people. Yeah. So I'm having to play this game. I got all these nice people, but dude, I need to make some money. Yeah. That's when I came up with that sign. I will work for $1 million. Yeah. So from there, I mean, then we started a business. We talked about a ton of different businesses, which I probably can't go into too much detail. Yeah, Because yeah, that's yeah. going to be shown out there, but we started something. Well, well why well, did you direct at me and why did you... Because you're, you you're, you're a good, you you're a all good guy. And then why, why do we direct that traffic? Well, towards, well, you know... Look, look, the, the problem in business is, is finding a good, uh, finding somebody that wants, that, that wants to be a partner and that trusts, like the fact that you trusted me is, had you not trusted me, I wouldn't have made, I wouldn't have gotten there. Yeah. So I don't know what caused you to trust me. I met a lot of other people, right, right, you know, other people trusted me, but they didn't want to do business. They didn't want to go do something. I needed to find one, somebody that would trust me. Two, somebody that would give me money. And three, somebody that wanted to build something. Like those three things together. I, didn't, I couldn't just find somebody that wanted to give me money because if all you did was give me money, then I need to go find another person to give me money. And I'm just, I didn't know you were going to be the partner yeah. when I met you. Okay. You know, I thought maybe I was going to buy an RV park. I, I, I literally thought that was one of my businesses because I started searching businesses to buy. To buy. Huh. And uh, there was a couple of RV parks. I thought Zabukovic's was for sale. I was just in the wrong place. <laughs> I went there to investigate, hey, I understand you're selling this place. Huh. He's like, no, that's the guy on the south side of town. And, and then I'm like, I don't even know anything about this business, but I think it's going to be great in the future, da, da, da. Can you show me an RV? I don't even know what an RV is. Next thing you know, I'm sleeping in one. But... Really, I was just showing up every day. I didn't know how it was going to unfold. And then, dude, then, then I run into you and Jenny. The next thing I know, we're selling mattresses, selling mattresses in the streets on a Saturday, freaking yep. putting flags Stopping out cars there. cars and, oh, yeah. It seems like a years and years ago. Right? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's a good time. 
So why wake up? I mean, is is why does wake up work? Yeah. One so, thing I learned when I was hanging out with you and you you talk the talk, you really understood marketing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would level you up with the best of the best in the world from a marketing standpoint. Why does wake up work? Well, because you know when I was there, I just kept running into all these businesses. I, I, the only people I ever called on was the people that owned a company. Yeah. I, I didn't talk to anybody else. I'd go to the gym if you didn't own a business. I didn't talk to you. I'm like, hey, that's good. And then you see you. Boom, boom. Next. And you watch me just bump. Yeah. Because I'm going to next. Next is a strategy, right? So yeah. um, every time I'd run into one of these businesses, I'd be like, hey, I'd go look at their pages. Facebook, nothing. Instagram, nothing. YouTube, nothing. I'm like, these people don't even know how to use social. It's, it's not a Pueblo problem, but it's, it's a mm-hmm. nationwide problem. And um, unfortunately, I couldn't tell anybody you know, how, uh, that I'm good at this game, that somehow I'm probably the oldest person on social media and probably make the most money like, in for my age group. So um, maybe any age group. I mean, we've raised almost $500 million, okay? The reason Wake Up works is because nobody, everybody has one, everybody has a page or pages. You're, you're, every customer's there, whether you're buying a roof or you're buying a house or you're getting a mortgage or you get a loan on a business, whatever you're doing, everybody, your clients are all on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, they're searching. That's where the whole world is, right? It's the TV, it's the billboard. We talked mm-hmm. about, I told your wife, this is the billboard. Right. It's just in my hand. Uh-huh. And I don't have to wait till I pass it. I see it every day. And you got what I was doing. I'm not buying ads. We're not buying ads. We're, we're creating a social presence to tell a story about that company and to the degree you can make the story interesting like i've just made my story interesting i'm just another person on the planet i'm of eight seven billion people i've just figured out how to how to weave into a part of my story in 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 the viewer's story Mm -hmm. how to sell something how to make money how to buy a piece of real estate and 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 that's what when i came to you and started saying Hey, let's do the bill. Uh, let's do the uh, sell the mattresses and do the Saturday, the gorilla marketing. Yeah. We're going to do land, you know, pages out. I'm like, that's not scalable. Yeah. Me and you running around <laughs> three hours putting. It worked, but it's not scalable. No, but I mean, I mean, how many days am I going to do this? Right. You know, I call home, and Lando's like, what'd you do today? Uh, I said, man, uh, we, we handed out flyers. Flyer? What's a flyer? She doesn't even know what a flyer is. I said, it's a flyer. So come, come, come buy a mattress. I'm like, I'm exhausted, <laughs> running around, messed up ankle. Yeah. You and Jenny, you're out there doing it. We got people hating on us for it. Right. You know? Slamming car doors at us, screaming at us, flipping us off. And, and, and then yeah. when I saw that you were willing to do that and you were willing to put money behind that, and then we went and made a bunch of money that weekend selling mattresses. We did. And then I'm like, I got, we got to scale this thing. And the fact that you were open to the whole social media thing, you had a podcast room you were starting. You know, you were, it was just the right person at the right time with the right open mind, you know, and, and, and then Wake Up Pueblo is going to offer that to companies that don't know how to do that. Mm-hmm. Any company that the owner or ownership is somewhere in the 35 to 40 year old to 60 year old in that band and they're running the company, which is probably the majority of companies in America. Mm-hmm. What, what, how would we know anything about social media? Right. All the customers are there, though. Can't do it. Don't know how to do it. Don't can't, have time to do it. Can't or, do it. Don't, don't have time. Yeah, I hadn't used that line in a while. Can't don't do, do it. it. Never get around to doing it. And no, you should be and doing it. Don't have time like to do it or something. Got to back we back and watch the show. We yeah. had a great line, though. <laughs> we did. Can't do it. Don't, don't do, do it, it. Can't do it. Never get time to do it. Yeah, we'll do it for you. Exactly. Sounds about right. So, yeah. And, and, and that's true. So, so Wake Up Pueblo, that, that business is like, you know, the fact that you invested the money to create podcast rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, Joe Rogan got his $100 million deal on podcasts. Right. We do podcasts from here. They're worth, they live forever. You know, we blow out a YouTube channel. We, we posted 5,000 5, plus videos on YouTube that cost almost nothing for us to put up that, has got, that live forever. Yeah. Every company in Pueblo should be doing this. Not just Pueblo, everywhere. Every company in Colorado Springs, they don't. Every company in Denver, why? They don't make the time to do it. They're running a business. How can I run a bank 
and do videos on YouTube. hundred percent. How can I take calls about roofing, follow hail storms, and take the time to build out a YouTube channel? Or LinkedIn or any of that. That was the, every time we talked to anybody, that was like, yeah. what, what is LinkedIn or what is YouTube? No, I, yeah, oh yeah, I did that video once a long time ago. Yeah, so yeah. that omnipresence is something that you yeah. definitely brought that's always yeah. in your face yeah. often. And, and ever since I follow you now, I mean, <laughs> it works. Yeah. You're on every single one of my pages all day long. Yeah, so you can't it get works. away from me. It, absolutely. The only way to get so. away from me is to block me. Yeah. <laughs> say, I don't want to watch this anymore. Even then, I'm probably going to find you and somewhere. You're still going to find it. Absolutely. And, and that's the point. Like the story that we were telling the, the business owners in Pueblo is, look, you don't have the time to do this. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to do this. You could do it, but it will cost you a lot of money to do it. I mean, what you're doing for what you charge, it would cost them two videographers. I have four. They would need two minimum. They would need at least, at least two editors. Those are going to be 30, 30, 60 grand. The videographer is going to be another 45,000 each. That's 90,000. So now they're at 120. They haven't even produced a piece of content yet. They don't have an HR person. You need a fifth person just to do HR. You got to do criminal background checks. You got to own the content. You need video cameras. You need lights. You need recording material. You need to archive all this stuff. Like it is, this is why people never do it. Right. Oh, well, I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah, you're going to post one video on YouTube one time. Right. And it's like throwing a, it's like throwing a, a brick in the Grand Canyon right. and thinking you're going to fill it up. You're not. So what mental. you're doing is freaking massive, dude. LinkedIn content, Twitter content, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok if they want it. Right. And just takes it off their plate. They need yeah. to run their business. They don't need to be doing all this side of that. That's what we do best. You know, and, and, and the other thing is like, like you know, I know, I know some of your, your, uh, some of your audience is going to be like, but how long is it going to take me to get a click or a like? You're yeah. not looking for clicks and like. You're looking for presence. Mm -hmm. You got to value presence, and it, it, it costs you more not to do this than it costs to do it. Mm -hmm. To not be there means you die. So, like, if I go to my Lewis Curtis, it, it was the name that I took on over there. Um, Lewis, I haven't gotten rid of this account yet. Real Lewis Curtis, I have. 668 followers <laughs> you know my last my last post had 64 likes you know but i'm not trying to get likes right and i'm not trying to monetize this page right but but i know if i'm not there we should be posting on this page every day by the way just do something dumb um they got kids out there they got 15 year old kids making millions of dollars a year on youtube it's just a distribution channel they pay Absolutely. nothing to do that oh. Yeah. So, I mean, even what you're doing right now, I mean, this was something that we did often when we're, we're in the middle of a meeting, <laughs> we're in the middle of tearing down walls, we're in the middle of something and, and Lewis just disappeared <laughs> because you had uh, so much going on. Yeah. How was that? I mean, t tell us that side of it. I mean, yeah, that, that you, was you uh, so many things and you are just like this force of energy yeah. everywhere you go and, and you're always just going. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's having, it's having a, a priority IQ, you know, I'm just, I'm just handling the next thing. It's like I'm handling, somebody pulled the pin, you know, well, what, you just pulled the pin on the grenade. Nothing else matters now. The only thing that matters is that grenade so that we don't all blow our faces off, <laughs> you know? So all I'm doing is moving. I'm moving to, to what is the most, the next most important event in my life. They, they happen to be big events. Yeah. So, you know, time is a really precious commodity. So when I'm, when I'm looking at a guy, you know, different than you, because you're in Pueblo, by the way. I know this was very complicated also on you and Jenny, because you're looking at this guy coming into town and you guys have lived there your whole lives. Right. My agenda is completely different than yours. Right. Yours has that added component of, hey, this is our neighborhood. Right. These people know us. We have to live here. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, at the end of the day, you know, I can bounce. I can, and you guys can't. Absolutely. And, and that is a reality of the reality show that people don't understand. Maybe they're like, oh, was it real? 
the thing the thing that they did they knew that, that the, the viewer won't see is these guys can't leave their town. This is where the kids go to school. This is where they go to church. This we'll is where they do business. Forty years building a reputation down there. We yeah. weren't going to just let that get torn away. And that's when we, if there was a time that we butted heads, that was when it was. Well, of course, but now it makes sense. And I was telling because you, you were like trying to move to the next thing, and Dude, I'm like, whoa, 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 the whoa, only thing I had, yeah. I, I was there to play a game and win a game. Exactly. And my game was to get to a certain valuation. Exactly. So I'm I'm like, hey, next. We would we would drive. You would be in your truck driving to a call, yeah. and I would, I'm driving over there, and I'm telling the GoPro, "This is the dumbest meeting. I'm going to get in there. And we're going to be in there three minutes." Yeah. Okay. When we were going to the bank, yeah, I'm like, "This is the dumbest meeting. There is no freaking way in the world these people will buy this," and they did. I was wrong. And what'd you say to the GoPro after? <sighs> <laughs> it's so good to be wrong. <laughs> It's so good to be wrong, you know, and, but there was other times when like, you know, like, okay, there's nothing here. Let's go. Yeah. Let's bounce because I need to get out one. I either had, let's go. Cause I'm running out of time every day. So not less a, a day less on 90 days, or I got some other deals calling me, mm-hmm. you know, see your, your crew's like $10,000 for one month. And I'm like, I'm working. I'm thinking to myself, I'm working a deal for 110 million right now. I'm going to blow this deal because I'm in this meeting. So I was being like ripped apart yeah, between win the undercover billionaire game and uh, I got this deal over here that like a lot of people, are, yeah. you know, are. And in my head, I'm like, this guy has no manners. He just split on Zero a meeting. Manners. Like, where, where the heck is this guy going? Right, but right. you're like, there's some big fish out there you got to take care of. Yeah. And I couldn't tell you. Right. Yeah. So, but you know, that's probably what people go through every day. Absolutely. I got to go to get the, the kids. Yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot my wife's anniversary tonight. You yeah. know, like the, people are being pulled. It just so happens. They're, the, most of the time, they're being pulled by things that actually don't improve the quality of their life. Yeah. Rather than putting those things out there, they're like, hey, let, let somebody else handle that one and let me go do something that's actually going to change the projection of where the family could go, where the business could go, you know. And so that's what I'm doing a better job of in my life today is like, I'm willing to walk out of a meeting with you. Most people can't do that because they're like, well, I can't, I can't do that. It's wrong. But, but I know this other thing is more right than that's this right. is wrong. Mm-hmm. And most people una- unable to don't have enough personal fortitude to say, oh, no, we're walking out of this meeting. Yeah. Because <laughs> that, that too, that's too big, too important. It's this guy. This yeah. guy, you know, this guy right here, he can, he, can, he can take a petal off of a flower and not damage the rest of the flower. And then turn around and snap your freaking brain, crush it <laughs> with the same hand. So you got to have both of those, right? Absolutely. You, you, you are the pedal guy. You're so freaking awesome. You're such a nice person. Uh, you and Jenny, you're just super nice people. I said this a lot of times. I'm like, we just need to develop the killer in him now, the crush, the, the killer. So yeah. yeah. So and, and Pueblo was built on that, dude. That that's 100%. a hard town, man. Yeah. The history of Pueblo. I mean, there's some gangsters came through that There town. is some gangsters. I mean, some serious. Yeah. Including Grant Cardone. Yeah, no, but I mean. He's hardcore. Some, you got to watch Some really out. bad dudes. He's man. hardcore. I mean, when you, when you hear the history of Pueblo, oh, yeah. I think Pueblo is a little maybe disconnected from his history. Like, yeah. the people that came through there and what they did, the Rockefellers mm-hmm. and the, 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 Van, the Van, who, Vanderbilts or the, the what's, what's the ones that start with the G? Uh, you know the history of Pueblo? You guys taught me half of it. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Guggenheim, Guggenheims. That's the Hummers. Yeah, Guggenheims mm-hmm. or something. I don't know. Yeah, you guys on YouTube, shows. tell me what, what, what names I'm missing. You should do your research right. on Pueblo. So, uh, yeah, I, I spent more time with you probably than most people ever get to spend time with you. You spend more time with me than, than probably, probably my your, wife. Your family, your pilot. I got yeah. like five yeah. months with you. Crazy. And uh, so you got to know me a little bit. I got to know you a little bit, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, goods, bads, and uglies and everything in between. But what, what advice would you have for Matt Smith going forward? Um, what advice would I have for Matt Smith? Knowing me. Well, Matt Smith's got a big future in front of him. <laughs> I think Wake Up Pueblo is going to be a big deal. You know, um, you're a great entrepreneur, you know. You're you're very you're you you you're you're just a good dude. Everybody's gonna like you, you know. I know you say you're not gonna do politics, but I know one day you're gonna, because enough people are gonna say that to you. You'll play you'll play the game one day. You have an announcement to make about politics, possibly? Not today. <laughs> uh, not yet. You sure? Yeah, I'm gonna run for president of Discovery Channel. <laughs> um, and. Um, 
so yeah so like you're you're you, you know you you your people skills are tremendous like you you know you you have a way to get people to bond to you and trust you and i mean you have a skill set i don't have i appreciate that I, and, and it's probably too late in my life to develop it yeah. uh, so i wish i had that um but wake up pueblo man you guys are going to offer a great service to southwest colorado without a doubt it needs it too Absolutely, and Potentially and hopefully, Colorado, hopefully, if Discovery ever comes to their freaking senses, yeah, they'll release this show for Pueblo, you know, and you guys really ought to, y'all ought to take a run at them. Say, you know, you, you said that show was going to be this year, and you said this was going to be about Pueblo, not Pueblo and two other cities, yeah, and um, probably won't do any good, but. In but you, it, you and Discovery, you guys, you guys had your falling outs on. Oh yeah, you it, should it, definitely. It a, this should definitely be a title. It, Grant Cardone has fallen out with Discovery Channel, and okay. and definitely Grant Cardone and Discovery Channel behind the scenes was a thing. It, when it was, a, it was a thing all day, every day. There was a lot of well, that's a production going on. company. Yeah, and oh, exactly. The you're right. Discovery thing. So yeah, and t- then the, and then there's the <laughs> there's the. I, I was on the phone with Glenn Stearns the other day. I said, yeah. Glenn. I said, Glenn. You know. I'm sure they've told you how much nicer you are than me. He's like, <laughs> yes, they have. <laughs> and I'll refrain. Like, I knew in three days. I said, oh, this is... Because yeah. they had the same crew with Glenn Stearns that they had with me from the, in the beginning. Oh, really? I didn't In know. the very beginning. Okay. And when COVID hit, the whole, th- the whole team got dissipated. And... But I knew in three days, I said, oh, this is a different experience for you guys. Because at three or four days, they were like, you got to slow down. This is going too fast. Yeah. And I'm like, uh... uh this, I'm doing, we're doing a different deal. When are you going to start spending money? I'm like, don't worry about that. This is my plan. This isn't your plan. And the production company, you know, they, they do have to make a TV show. Right. And I'm like, no, no, we ain't doing that. No, we're not doing that. No, we're not doing that. And they're like, we, we got to, no, you're not doing it. This is what I'm doing. You guys, your job is to follow me. And all of a sudden they knew, they're like, oh, dude, we have an uncontrollable force here. <laughs> this guy's uncontrollable, Absolutely. has his own thoughts. I'm driving down the road. There's three trucks before COVID hit. Three trucks following me trying to get video. I'm freaking, you know, I, I drive worse than your wife does. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and they're like, they're pulling me over. Dude, you got to quit driving like this. You're putting people at risk. I'm like, Fuck, I, don't, I didn't even know you guys were following me. I'm on to the next thing. You said you were going to Matt's. The next thing you're going over to this restaurant. That's right. I'm going to call on these people before yeah. I see Matt. Like, it was like freaking crazy. Yeah. And they were pissed off. They're upset. They can't follow me. They can't get their cameras. They're like, we're not set up. I'm like, fuck your setup. I ain't, I'm, I'm going in to make a sales call. Yeah. I forgot. I, half the time I would forget that I was doing a TV show because I got so into it yeah. to like, no you guys, I'm going to get the money. Yeah. And they're like, we need the camera to record it for that to be important. And I'm like, uh, okay, well, get the, get the camera, camera to record it, it or right I'll now. do it on my phone, yeah. you know, because yeah. I know takes. how to do this. So, so I was in this constant, because I didn't want to lose my momentum. Yeah. And, and I know the momentum is like, it is, it's this thing. It's yeah. this, you know, it's the it. Yeah. And every time it's like, hold on, Grant, we got to get the drone up. Yeah, I'm something like, new. I don't need the drone shot. Yeah. You need the drone shot. I don't care about the drone shot. I need the money. Yeah. And so there was that. You said five months because what happened was I was there about right. about a month, got stopped, took two or three months off, went back, clock stopped, and went back and finished it in two months. But the whole the entire time from start to finish, there was we were buttonheads the entire time. There was never yeah, everybody was I saw it. peace, dude. But I respect that about you too. Is like you, you, this was their show, but you were in control. You well, knew it was what you wanted. It, it, it was like like I fought to be an executive producer on the show. And they're like, Glenn didn't want to be a producer on the show because he didn't want to feel like the show's produced. I'm like, oh, okay, well that's Glenn's that's Glenn's decision. Yeah, I'm not gonna call I'm not gonna not call myself something, and I know I'm gonna have some production input here. Yeah, I'm not gonna try to trick the public. Yeah. So that's not who I am. Hey guys, I'm in the show. There is a show. There are cameras. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a show. Yeah. Don't be stupid. And but I'm gonna go get that money, and you guys get to follow me around, watch me pick up that paper. Yeah. And but everything else was real. I mean, like yeah. if we could have figured out how to do it without cameras, without a crew, we would have done it. You just can't figure out how to do it. Yeah. I met you. I didn't know you before then. 
Mm-hmm. I'd never been to Pueblo. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to, I did not know how to get from the RV park to the other side, to Corona, where I ended up living. Uh, they showed me after like three weeks that I was going the wrong way every time. Oh, how funny. You know? Taking the long way? Yeah, because I, I should have been yeah. taking Pueblo. Uh, what, yeah. what road is that? The shortcut? Uh, Pueblo? No, no. What's that? Boulevard. No, Not no. Boulevard, uh, no, I would always go to the 25. Santa Fe? Or anyway. I-25? Oh, yeah. To I would always crowd. go around, all oh, the way around. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, there was a, there's that main road with the big apartment building. Yeah, that's the other thing. Main, they didn't really want me buying apartments. Yeah, that's what I heard. They're like, that's a transaction. Had this whole big fight about. But you I should have a whole section there. I, Cardone fights with Discovery, blowout like like that's the stuff people love. Okay. And you were trying to buy real estate, and, and like, that's I went a on a couple of deals I'm with like, you too. Real and estate, that. huh? Watching you in action at the Kona guy was was yeah. remarkable. Just seeing how you you just were in the zone. That, that was your element that yeah, whole time. That and they deal, were like, you can't do this. They didn't want me to do a social media company. Yeah, they're like, these are the things you do already. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, am I supposed to come here? You didn't say I had to come here and learn a new skill. Right. You just said get to the money. And you you just said I had to get a million dollars, a million out. dollar, build a million dollar company. Yeah. So they didn't want to do the real estate. I had this days and days I would fight them about the real estate. They don't want to cover the apartment deal. I said, guys, real estate is not a transaction. It is a business. So the deal you ended up doing there with your place, that is a business as long as you bring in other tenants. Mm -hmm. And and so anyway, we had all these, you know, it's just... (laughs) What was, what was and I'm used one to, behind the scenes? I'm used to running on my own, dude. I'm yeah. used to doing whatever I want to do. I don't have a discovery. Everything. I don't have a production company. Yeah. I, you know, we do grant. Yeah. And, 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 and I thought that's what I was going there to do. And then when you add other people and other... And look, Discovery is a great channel. Yeah. They've been, you know, done, done a lot of really Absolutely. successful things. As long as you, you want to watch mindless TV. Yeah. You know, but this isn't mindless TV. This is following a guy that wants to go from zero to a million dollars. Yeah. And there is a strategy. And that's what I was trying to tell him. Like, guys, we're not digging for gold here. Mm-hmm. Okay. This isn't like a shovel, mountain, survival. This is, I'm trying to, I got to meet a person, yeah. convince him to trust me. And then start trying to build a business. I thought I was going to have an acai bowl place. I was thinking that was going to be the yeah, business. We talked about that. So anyway, man, yeah. it, was, it was insane. So the, the, the 10X. If you ever get a chance to go, you should, like 10 years from now, go be undercover. There you go. Somewhere. It would be a journey for sure. Freaking insane. Would you do 10 it? 10 years. Would you do Absolutely. it? Absolutely. You would? Absolutely. I'd the, have to get permission, but yeah, yeah. 10 years from now, maybe. It'd be, a, it'd be a fun one. But yeah, 10X, wake up. Uh, you know, I, I've, our whole team is here right now. We've got just an unbelievable behind the scenes to see what you do. Like, I didn't realize this when you were in Pueblo, Colorado. Now that I'm in your element, you got a lot to be proud of here. You've got yeah. an amazing team. You have your energy is conveyed in everybody in this entire building here. And, uh, you know, we're excited to partner with you in all this. What's, what's next for 10X and what's next for 10X and wake up? So, you know, I mean... 10, 10X is it's way bigger than me. Like when you come in here, you've been here the last two days. Yeah. You come to the morning meeting. Yeah. You know, anybody that's watching this, you've ever get a chance to come in this environment. It, it, it will give you at least the example of what a company could look like, whether you want your company to look like that or not. Is, is a, a, Just the, the passion, the energy first yeah. thing in the morning. And then every single person on your team is so like, what can we do to help? How, how, yeah. how, how do we get there? Yeah. But they know the numbers. They understand how what success means in this building yeah, and how yeah. they're going to get there. Yeah, and and yeah. their goals are so 10 x out there that yeah. they're doing it. Yeah. It's it's impressive. Your element is impressive. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. And it wasn't always like that. Like 10 years ago, it wasn't, I didn't have this business. I didn't have 10 or 12 years ago. When 08 hit, I guess 12 years ago, we, we, I was dependent upon four, five, six people. I was off and out of a home. It was just an amateur hour, man. And uh, that's what I respect about you, Matt, and what you and Jenny have built. Like you have Snap Fitness, you have a big commitment there. You have your your uh, mattress store, uh-huh. Snooze. I need a mattress, by the way. I need a queen mattress for my kid, my oh. kid's bedroom. I get it shipped. And um, you know, you you're a commi- you, you're a guy that you commit. Yeah. You put money into it, and a lot of people just think, and you're willing to you're willing to write the check. And, and then push on it, advertise it, hire to it, 
you do all those things, so you do that expansion thing. So I think you're going to be, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't get nominated or selected as the fastest. Wake Up Pueblo probably is going to be the fastest growing business in the state of Colorado. You guys should definitely apply for whoever keeps that. Yeah. You're definitely. Oh, the I momentum mean, is nobody knows unreal. what happens in this thing, but. Absolutely. But you, you should get that. 2020 award. Well, yeah, we developed something that is such a need. But you're, but but it, it was transferable to you. Crazy. Like you, the right when the right people pick up the 10x thing. Yeah. you picked it up. You're the right person for it. You're like, wham! All of a sudden, you went from during COVID, no revenue at all, no customers at all, to adding a customer lineup that is like from your Snap membership at what is that 40 bucks a month or something mm-hmm. to selling a sofa to a guy what once every seven years, right? To all of a sudden, you got a business now that's doing, that's signing up the best of the best companies in Pueblo mm-hmm. that want you to handle their YouTube, their Snap, their their social LinkedIn, media. their social media accounts. Yeah. I got out of the pitch a little bit. Yeah. I got to get back into the pitch. Yeah, get, we got it now pretty good. Um, the fact that you went from that during COVID, the country's being shut down, and you freaking pivoted, yeah. continued to operate your other two businesses, and added this third business, which I know for sure is going to be the fastest growing company in Pueblo mm-hmm. and probably the fastest growing in the state of Colorado in 2020 right. when 30 million jobs were lost. It's freaking crazy. Shows you the power of 10x with the right person. Yeah. And, you know, not not because not everybody likes the 10x message. You know, a lot of people, they, they want to do the 1x. <laughs> it's interesting. They want to do the 1.25x. They just want to stay where they are until they realize, oh, I can't. Well, and, and th- that's something that you definitely brought to us. I mean, when you did the little bit of research meeting all the small businesses, you did your due diligence and saw that a lot of these business guys, if they're making money, they're good. If they're not making money, they're just clocking in on Monday, clocking out Friday. Yeah. That's kind of what it is. Where you, you've, I mean, since you've been gone, the elevation already, people are getting deals left and right because of the, what we're doing out there. Yeah. You know, we had a, one of our uh, uh, financial guys was like, YouTube just got me a deal. And, and uh, yeah. Instagram, somebody just called me off of Instagram. I would have yeah. never in a million years even known that that was a thing. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this, this was all right there. You knew that it was, it was well, necessary. It, there was yeah, a need. It, it's just there. Yeah. It, you know, and, and, and so COVID really kind of pulled the cover off of yeah. you have to always go see somebody. And everybody pushed to this Zoom meeting. So all that actually benefited maybe an awareness. Yeah. Um, the world didn't stop, you know. We, we, you know, regardless of what everybody says every day in the media, people are still doing business. Yeah. And it's, it's unfortunate how many businesses got hurt, but a lot of those businesses got hurt because they have not been using many of the tools. Not pushing. So when fewer people buy, guess what? People, people suffer. Yeah. And what happens is the people at the top, the people that are best known in the market, are going to win the market share. Mm-hmm. And so what Wake Up Pueblo is doing is making sure your customers, whether they bought from you, they heard of you before, it doesn't matter what they did in the past. It matters what, hey, are they thinking about you when they're ready to go do this today? So there's three categories of business owners in Pueblo, probably in every town. It's like, this has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. The other group is we're doing just fine. And the third group is like, dude, we're never doing good enough. Yeah. And we want to lean into this hard. And, and that's probably all across America where I can't do this, it has nothing to do with me, I can't afford it, I can't, my customer's not there. Yeah. When I bought my plane, I, I told Gulfstream, I said, you should let me do all your social media. And they're like, we don't think our customer's there. I'm like, I just, I just wrote you a check. <laughs> like, they're there. I bought the place that we had dinner at last night, when I bought that, I said, guys, I should do all your social media. We don't think our customer's there yet. They still have three units over there they hadn't sold. Really? And the building's eight years old. I'm like, well, there you go. Wow. And they're going to end up filing bankruptcy because they never got the profits out of the deal because nobody knows them because there's so much competition in the marketplace. Really? So, you know, your wife sells billboards. I see the billboard. People pay a lot of money for the billboards. You know, I know Lamar's all over the country built them. Hundred multi hundred million dollar business, billion dollar business out of that. Yeah. Driving down the road, see the billboard. But today, it's my billboard. It's and right wake there. up Pueblo billboard, and put you on the phone. That's your newspaper. That's everything. Breaking news. Breaking news. Apple's about to announce their new 11 iPhone, 12 or whatever. Yep. So what's next with uh, Wake Up? What's next with 10X and Wake Up? Um, 
You tell me, man. What's next? What's the game? I'm just your partner. Nationwide. Colorado wide. Does everybody know that you, you are now a 10X sales and marketing bona fide, certified? We have certainly been telling everybody from the tallest building that we can find I'm that sure. we are 10X certified sure. yeah. sales and marketing team for sure. We've never given that to anyone in the world, by the way. And we don't take so, it lightly. So We're representing well. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So. In my eyes, I think this this could definitely it's it's there, there's such a need, and everybody that we've got on board is seeing huge results. And, and you're, you're opening the eyes to small businesses, large businesses. A lot of the older business community has no idea what social media is, and yeah, some yeah, people are yeah. still throwing ads in the newspaper yeah, or yeah. the old phone book. We saw we had a ton of people like I still do the phone book, dude. I <laughs> what? And I and, and I, told, I told it was Corey, right? No, Rory, Rory. Rory, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, Rory, you should keep doing it, too. <laughs> yeah, if it works. Somebody said, you said. should quit doing that. I'm like, no, yeah. dude, did you make money last month? Yeah. Throw money at it again. Uh-huh. Like, like, when things work, I don't change my underwear. Yeah. Like, what was I wearing yesterday? Okay, good. Stats went up. Do it again. Do it again. Every like, whatever. Tuesday. You don't know what works. Like, I don't always know, uh, you know, what, what exactly works. Like, Francisco, wear that striped shirt again today. It works. Okay, because it worked. That's why we say, what day is it? Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday used to be a good day. I don't know if it was this week or not, but. Every day is Tuesday. Yeah, but anything I can do to help you guys blow up and get Pueblo known, it's a great place to live and work. And because and, it is a great place, man. Yeah. Great, great place, great schools, great people. Like, stop and get directions. People aren't hating on you all the time. Yeah. You want to tell them about that one girl that hated on me, though? I still remember her. I'm still hurt about that. The cryotherapy? Cryo chick. What's <laughs> yeah. her name? Cryo bitch. Des. Grant Des. Cardone this reveals is, cryo bitch this is, in Pueblo. This is, this is the only one that uh, he didn't get along with. Yeah, in the man, whole she trip. didn't like me, man. The, the, She's the a girl, firecracker. The girl told me she didn't want me to move to Pueblo. We don't want you here. Yeah. I'm like, wow. At least she's honest. <laughs> yeah, she is honest. We'll give her that. Yeah, so. Um, Hey, what did you learn? Let, 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 let's just use this piece real quick for him to just flip it. Okay, what did you learn uh, rolling around with me? Uh, same thing I've learned in your actual place here. Like you've, you've just, you, when I was with you, a lot of it was like I'm hanging out with the tornado and I don't know what's next. And in your entire team here, I've learned that they feel that way every single day. As much uh-huh. as they know you, they're still prepared to pivot at any moment, any hour, and, and for the right reasons, like you, you're just, you're a force. And, and when I was with you, sometimes I got frustrating. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. wait, we need to come back here before we go there. And you're like, hey, we have time for that. We'll figure that out later. Let's go make some more sales. Let's go do this stuff. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the, the passion, the energy, the passion for life is, is something that you just can't duplicate. You know, the, the, the family, you know, that, that was something that pulled me into you that we talked about last night a little bit, but Family first was something that that's the reason I, I wrote a check at the beginning of this was because I'm like, this guy, he's a dad. Yeah, yeah. He, he's yeah. a husband. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and that's passions in life for you. Like, you definitely are a, a good man and, and, and you care about your family. You know, yeah, family yeah. first, 100%. But as far as like learning lessons, it was the, the structure, the systems, uh, what you have here that we've seen with your teams and, and building that, you know, and, 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 and running fast, the 10X way. I'm learning that now that there's a label to it, but at the time yeah, it was yeah. like, just catch up. Where's it going next? What are we yeah, doing here? Yeah, yeah. We're in the middle of a meeting and I'm like, we're trying to finish a meeting. You're like, poof. I got not have time for that. We got to do this next Yeah, step. but we'll you know, to, to me thing. it was cool because Sherry does this really well. Sherry never tries to stop me. Yeah. She, whole team. She, she never tries to make me wrong. Like, hey, Grant, we didn't finish it. Never. Like yeah. 10 years she's been with me. Yeah. She, different by the way, than my wife. My wife is not, she is not as able to do this because I mean like, different it, dynamic. it's a different relationship. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sherry, Sherry's job is to support me in being the tornado. Yeah. A, guy, a guy told me this once and I'll never forget, Doug Doring, he owns uh, ABC Mouse. You've probably seen it on TV. They do mm-hmm. a learning tool for kids. We have it for our kids. Yeah, it's freaking like he's in, it's awesome. It's a multi-billion dollar company. And, and he's a marketing company too. I mean, they're genius at marketing. Genius. You, you see them everywhere. And, and he, he said to me, he's like, hey, I really want your help on this. I said, yeah, but what do you want me to do? I said, what do, you, what do you need? He's like, all we want is who you are. Nothing more. We don't want you to be less than that. We don't want you to be more than that. Yeah. Just be you. And I was like, wow, it was so calming, right? Sherry never asked me to be somebody else. Yeah. She knows I am going to push everything. She knows I'm going to offend people. They might take something down and they'll be like, why'd y'all take that down? Well, we didn't want to check with you on it because we know you're going to fight us on it. 
put it back up, damn it. Yeah. But but she's never gonna fight me. And you you yeah. got used to like flowing yeah. with this this thing, you know? And and I think people more business owners should find some superstars. Absolutely. And like find a superstar. Quit saying that you can't find good people. There's good people out there. Oh, 100%. But you, you can't get right great people yeah. if you squelch them and overmanage them. And you never tried to overmanage me. Yeah, you, you I mean, saw something. And there was such a different dynamic. Obviously, if I could do it all over again, I'd be like, okay, I, I understand where he's coming from. Well, but you just got behind it, me like, everything. still a random guy in our community, yeah, this totally. Lewis guy. That no, we're, that, that, so sometimes I'm like, no, well, that was, do you know what you're talking about? Like, it and, sounds like it, but. You know, how many people had to be telling you, like, what are you doing even trusting this freaking oh, guy from LA? Every day there was somebody, if it wasn't you, it was people texting me and calling me like, who is this who guy is, and what the hell is he yeah. doing in your community? And I don't trust him that, you shouldn't trust him either. Make, get as far away from that guy as you he possibly can. Fast. He talks too fast and he's, he's, he's not, yeah. his intentions aren't pure, or whatever yeah, it may yeah, be. Yeah, like yeah. they just didn't, they had no idea who you were. Yeah. But it was, it was a heck of a ride. Well, you're, you know, I learned from you, man, you're really involved in the community, you gotta be. Everybody yeah. should get, if you wanna be successful, you gotta get involved in your community. I remember rappelling with you you know, yeah, that was you, fun. Even though I got beat it. you to beat you down, I still got it got on my, some fun. my other phone. You man. did beat me. I beat you down. Work. You know, your wife was Work pulling for you, right. didn't help you at all. Yeah, um, <laughs> you got that old wide-legged stance, and I'm going down like Tom Cruise. No, that's not how it happened. You guys got to watch this video. Yeah, but it was awesome. We had a blast together. I learned a lot from you. I still continue to learn from you. I see. Yeah what you're doing right now and I see where you're going and it's just, it's it's a journey to just, we're just lucky to be a little little part of your ride right yeah, now. Yeah, and anything we can do to help wake up Pueblo okay, and, 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 and continue to help and support the business yeah. owners in the community, uh, all you gotta do is reach out to me. And, yeah, this is a great partnership. Yeah. I'm excited to have you and keep learning. Beautiful. Man. Thanks yeah. for thanks Ten. for taking some time today, giving us a little 10X, a little wake yeah. up. You and got it, uh, man. Yeah, until the next you, time. Thank you. Appreciate you, my Thank man. You.